Good morning. This is Faith in Our Hometown, brought to you as a community service and sponsored by Mercy Hospital Joplin. And now, here's your host, Father Jay Friedel. Good morning, everyone, and thanks for joining us for another weekend here at Faith in Our Hometown. I'm still just amazed that some of you like tune in at 6.30 in the morning on a Sunday, or at 9 for those of you who like to sleep just a tiny bit later, uh, and join us for this conversation about things that matter to us as people of faith in the greater Joplin area. So um, I will tell you this morning, uh, we had a, a guest that uh, canceled on us, and so we, we called in a marker, and uh, one of my friends and colleagues uh, who works with me uh, in the Joplin Area Catholic Schools decided to come on this morning, because one of the things we wanted to talk about is how schools have been adjusting, how they adjusted during the time of COVID, the plague, and how we're gonna be maybe adjusting a little bit more now that we're getting more people uh, you know, uh, vaccinated and those kinds of things. So. My guest is gonna be Dr. Emily Yoakum, uh, who is the principal at Macaulay High School, Catholic High School, and St. Peter's Middle School. And we're gonna be right back after this Mercy Minute to talk about school life in the time of COVID. I have arthritis in my knees, and it was just excruciating. I wish I would have done something sooner. I found myself not able to go up and down stairs, which is bad because we realized we were going to have to sell our house. We decided just to take the, the first, the worst one first, and uh, we did. I was back to work in six weeks. Uh, six months later, I had surgery on the second one, and, uh, and I'm back to work in five weeks. And I was a little scared, a little apprehensive, even though I knew everything that was going to happen. Um, but it just, I was just impressed. Life is short and, and I waited, I, I think I waited too long. Well, again, thanks for joining us for another Sunday morning of Faith in Our Hometown. My guest this morning, Dr. Emily Yoakum, who is the principal for Macaulay Catholic High School and also for St. Peter's Middle School, mm -hmm. which sit right there on the property there next to St. Peter's. Uh, the high school's been there for a long time, you yes, know, yes. Uh, almost 135 years, you know, with the sisters coming to Joplin and doing their thing. Yes. And you're the new generation of leaders uh, in that school. Yeah. So thanks yeah. for doing what you do for us, yeah. Emily. But what I want to talk about this morning is um, all the adjustments that everybody's had to make. You know, uh, I, I know you not only made them, but all of our school systems have made them. Mm -hmm. um, so give us a little bit of like, so, uh, you know, uh, you, you started the year a little crazy because mm -hmm. we didn't know what we were going to do. So talk about some of the things that everybody had to do in order to make it happen. Yes, absolutely. Um, it started about a year ago uh, and we left for spring break and um, didn't happen to come back and <laughs> um, have our students in the classroom at the end of last year. Um, making it through that, uh, this summer we were, had a lot of planning, planning committees, um, really looked at um, how we were going to make our school and our classroom safe um, for our students and for our teachers and, and our school community. Um, and of course, too, at the secondary level, um, we have sports and activities. And so um, really just planning, planning for um, from the minute students enter our building um, to the time they leave, what are how are we going to keep them the safest and yeah so when you did that i mean i mean you made you made lots of plans so like well give me some of the give me some examples of the plans like you know what did what did you do in terms of spacing distancing masking you know all that kind of good stuff so what did, what what would be the typical day of how you would start off and keep them safe throughout the day yes our students when they enter the building um, they all go through a temperature symptom check um, they have their temperature taken before lunch as well um, and then in our classrooms, our teachers um, spread our desks apart for about six feet. Uh, we worked with uh, Joplin, or Joplin Public Schools um, and received CARES Act funding and were able to purchase some, some items, either sanitation products, um, desks, independent desks, um, the see-through glass dividers, um, and really teachers set up their classrooms that, that students would be spread out from each other. Um, in between classes, teachers wiped down desks, um, any areas students used, 
Um, we spaced out locker use. Every other locker um, we assigned to students, so <coughs> they had an opportunity to be spread out more. Um, and then we knew starting the school year that we were going to require students to wear masks um, and faculty and anybody who came into our building uh, that they were going to be required to, to be masked at all times um, because it was important to us to, for the common good of everybody sure. and making sure that, that we were safe there. Yeah. Um, now, you guys didn't have to. We were a little bit blessed because mm -hmm. smaller school size. Yes, yes. Uh, that we didn't have to, like, alternate, you know, which group of students was going to come on which days and all that kind of good stuff yes. when we did this. Yes. We were able to, once we went back to, in, in, and we've been all year mm -hmm. in face-to-face. -face. Yes, yes. Um, uh, we didn't have to, you know, alternate or do those things. So did we have any issues in terms of... Uh, you know, breakouts or things like that. I mean, did we, uh, we really wasn't, we didn't have much, did we? We didn't have a lot. Um, at the beginning of the year, much like many schools in the area and the United States, um, we did have our, our cases here or there. Um, and we would go through our contact tracing and uh, we had students that um, were sent home for their two week period because of um, close contact with somebody who had tested positive. Um, we did have, um, larger groups of students in around October um, that we we had been set up where uh, with the online learning piece that they could um, Google meet into into our classes and um, you know we were fortunate that our fall sports were not impacted um, <laughs> with COVID uh, we did have our winter sports uh, but it happened during a break and so we were fortunate that we did not have to reschedule any games, um, yeah, but, nice. but lately it's been, um, it's been going well. Yeah. yeah, and I'm assuming that as life continues to get, as we get more and more people vaccinated and more and more people doing some of that stuff, that things will actually get easier rather than more difficult. Yes, we're hoping and um, we're seeing right now that the CDC is, is kind of updating their requirements and their recommendations. and. Um, they are opening things up a little more, um, and that's making it uh, a lot easier. Um, mm -hmm. But again, we don't have the number um, that other schools in our area have. Uh, so some things that those requirements are opening up have really been open to us all year. Yeah. Um, but that's. So uh, in talking to your colleagues around the uh, around the area, you know, how has CJ and uh, Neosho and Joplin and Carthage, I, I, how are they, how's everybody faring, you know, school systems? I think we're all faring the best we can. Um, I think each one of our systems has um, a unique challenge. Um, for instance, Joplin at the high school level uh, went every other day because of their number of students. Um, but that has, that has benefits too. And um, I think every school that I've talked to in the area has had things go really well for them um, and then has had their own challenges that they've uh, had to face and overcome and and figure out how they were were going to solve it yeah i think it's interesting and I, I i just you know because i you know get the progress reports and everything we actually mm -hmm. had more faculty that had to contend mm -hmm. with it than mm -hmm. we did students that we were aware of of course the students could have been asymptomatic or whatever right. but we had more faculty that we had to contend with and for a while there the, the biggest right. challenge at least for one little two-week period was do we have enough subs to, mm -hmm. yes, <laughs> yes. to do this? Yes, well, and that's what it came down to is um, in our periods in October where we did have quite a few students gone, uh, we had talked about maybe going virtual and then between a couple of us on our administrative team, we just said that for kids, if they can be here, even if it's very few kids, it's important to them to be here. It's important for us um, to have them in school and so it really came down to we would have to go virtual if we did not have the, the, the faculty or staff to be able to, to house all the students. So you but could have gone back to doing what we did last year if it had been really necessary. Yes. But you guys didn't think that it was really necessary. No, and we have not at, at St. Peter's and Macaulay, um, we have not had to go virtual with everybody. Um, due to a COVID outbreak. So. Well, and we really didn't, I, I don't, I didn't hear of any of that, even in the larger area with the, with all mm -hmm. our public school systems. So, I mean, we've really gotten by, I mean, it's been a challenge, but we've really gotten by kind of unscathed, mm -hmm. Yeah. you know? Yeah. I, yes, it, I think everybody here, theirs had, had times where you have a large number of students out and 
Um, but I, th I think every school in our area has really done a fantastic job of overcoming a pandemic that we had never experienced before. And, you know, we were kind of having to fly by the seat of our pants and, and figure it out. And um, You do that you know. really well, though. <laughs> I try, but yeah. we have this area, we have a great support system for administrators, and, and everybody was really on board to to do what was best for students. Yeah, um, you know, it's interesting to me, like, you know, I remember, I of course chuckled because, I mean, there was one time we actually had to like quarantine one of the classes, you know, our mm -hmm. seniors at one point in time mm -hmm. because yes. they'd yes. gotten together and had a, even though they were distanced a little bit, but they got together and had a breakfast or something one weekend and, you know, cause they were seniors and, you know, of course one of them winds up, you know, uh, positive and yes. so you know we had to kind of like okay seniors guess what you get to dial in <laughs> yes. for the next you know 10 days two mm -hmm. weeks whatever it was mm -hmm. but other than that we really I'm, I'm surprised mm -hmm. that it really was as smooth as it was it, it's been wonderful um, yeah. you know it really it has been and like I said the positive cases we've had um, through contact tracing we at grade six through 12 have not had anybody who tested positive because of an exposure from school. Um, you know, and, and our seniors did have their, their one weekend, their but <laughs> you know, as a principal, you're excited that outside of school, they're getting together and um, they, they really did follow guidelines. Uh, they were outside, they were mostly masked, but at that time, our Joplin city requirements right. um, still required them to be quarantined. And, and so and we so went we ahead did. and did it and, um, you know, and we all survived they, and really, we made and I'm it. just going to say they don't look any the worse for wear. <laughs> I mean, you know, they really look, they look like they're, they're, they're fine and that they're still having a, I'm just really glad they didn't have to, you know, like last year's seniors really lost a lot of their time together at the end there. And this right. group has been able to stay together this year, right. which has been a real blessing for them. Right. You know, Emily, when you read, um, these stories about other places in the country that still haven't started open, I, you know, uh, what is it, how do you and the faculty and you know, th you think the region feels compared to some of those schools that have been virtual now for almost two years? Mm. Um, I literally think in my head, wow. Um, I go back to where our schools were this summer when we were trying to plan and um, honestly didn't know what the year was gonna bring. We didn't know what COVID would bring. Um, and so you kind of blindly make these plans with with no research, no knowledge, no experience. Um, and I think now- Just the advice of the CDC yes. and things like that. Yes. I mean, you're just trying to, but you're kind of like hitting a moving target. Right, right. <laughs> um, but I think sometimes, you know, we talked a lot about the academic component that the students would miss out on, um, but really with this age group of students too, the, the mental and emotional health of students. And, um, you know, looking at the, looking at the, the schools that are, starting to go back to in-person. Um, I know they'll be fine and I know they'll make it because all of us in this region have, um, but it's a, lot of, it's a lot of work, it's a lot of unknowns, it's a lot of sleepless nights. Um, I'm excited for them to get back around people, um, even the adults, you know, we as humans just crave interaction. And um, so I think those, those other regions that are getting ready to go back in person it will be so much better than um, what they've really had to do to just make it through this past year. Yeah. My guest this morning, Dr. Emily Yoakum, who is the principal at uh, Macaulay Catholic High School and uh, St. Peter's Middle School. Um, she's been gracious enough to come on this morning and fill in for a guest that had to cancel at the last minute. So I am grateful. And we're going to be right back to talk a little bit more about school in the time of COVID right after this quick break. You're watching Faith in Our Hometown on KSN-TV, brought to you as a community service and sponsored by Mercy Hospital Joplin. Well, again, thanks for sticking with us on a Sunday morning. Uh, my guest this morning, Dr. Emily Yoakum, uh, who's the principal at Macaulay Catholic High School and St. Peter's Middle School, uh, coming into the last minute, saving Father Jay's bacon here uh, by coming on and having a conversation with mm -hmm. me about what school life's been like in the time of COVID. Mm -hmm. If you were to identify what was the one biggest challenge that you've had during this last oh. year plus, what would it be in terms of, you know, it's just as a leader, 
I think for me, and I've thought about this a lot lately, um, as a leader, you always um, have to have this mindset of, we're gonna make it, it's gonna be okay. Um, and going through this experience the past year, um, and we look back to March, and especially at the high school level when you plan prom and graduation <laughs> and all those events, um, that really you plan months in advance, families come out of town. Um, I think the hardest thing for me it was just that um, knowing in the end we were gonna be fine and make it work, but also being able to just keep everybody pumped up, keep everybody on the same page, keep everybody's spirits high, give everybody hope that, you know, <laughs> we would have graduation, we would have a prom. Um, you know, I told everybody when we left at spring break and just everything kept getting pushed back. Um, no, last I, year. Last yeah. year, yes, yeah, yeah. yes, uh -huh. last yeah. year. Um, I said, I don't know what it will look like, but we will do some sort of prom and we will do some sort of graduation. And I also said, I don't know when it will be. Um, it could be you come back in December um, yeah. from college or wherever you're at and, and we do it. But um, I think that's the hardest piece of, of not knowing what the future holds, but it's still your responsibility to give everybody hope that, that we're going to make it through, that we have a plan, um, that our, our students' needs will be met and taken care of. Yeah, and I do think, uh, I think you nailed that. I mean, just in terms of, it is in leadership, just trying to give people hope and let them hang on. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think, you know, well, you're, you're, you're a positive personality anyway. I mean, that's one of the reasons why our students love her. Maybe not, <laughs> well, never mind. Um, but anyway, that's one of the, student, the reasons the students mm -hmm. love you is because you are positive and you keep that attitude going in the school. And I, and I think about some of the other administrators that I know and the other you know, schools around the region and things like that. And I, you know, uh, you know uh, it, it requires that in terms of leadership just so that you don't, so that you don't just like start circling the drain in terms of depression or despair or, you know, oh my God, it's never good. Life is never going to be the same again. You know, it's like, you can't tell them we're going to get it all fixed or right away, but you can say, okay, we don't know what this is going to look like, but we are going to do some of these things down the road for you. And, and we did. And it really wasn't as bad as we thought mm -hmm. it was going to be even last May. Right. But right. this year, I mean, I'm just looking forward to the fact that, you know, things are, you know, again, we can get more people vaccinated. Glory be to God. We, you know, we'll, we, uh, things should get more and more normal as this spring unfolds. Yes, yes. Yeah. It's, it's been a wonderful year. Um, you mentioned earlier the, the senior class, and, and I think a lot of times people, we feel bad because last year's seniors, the class of 2020, didn't get the fourth quarter that, that they deserved. They didn't get the end of the year that, that they had planned. Um, I personally feel bad for the class of 2021 because um, all year has been different. Um, <laughs> planning events, planning dances, um, it's just, it's been different. And um, the one thing that I just love about all, all class of 2021 20, students is they went into this year knowing it would be different and they had a choice to either accept it and move full steam ahead or, you know, be upset about it. And every senior I've met in all of our area schools really just jumped in and said, I'm glad to be back at school, I'm glad to be here, whatever that means, however my senior year is different from what it could have been. Um, so I, I am proud of, of our entire class of 2021 across the nation because um, it has been different and, and they had a choice to accept it or not and, and yeah. they chose to go This year's it. been really interesting for me watching that particular crew. Each one's a little different. Um, you know, but like this group was three years old when I arrived in Joplin, mm -hmm. and and they're a mess, but I love them. <laughs> I mean, they are they are they are just. Uh, I mean, you know, they're just kind of like they're they're stubborn, and sometimes gonna be a little mouthy, and but I mean, they've got good spunk, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. and I love that yeah. about them. Yeah, I mean, I really do. They're just kind of. They're just who they are, and I, I just I, I love that about them. Just from watching them do it, because it is interesting. You get to see a little bit about character, mm -hmm. um, not just the characters, but character. Mm -hmm. Okay, in mm -hmm. when and how they're responding to this as they go. Right, right. And this has been interesting. Right. We had our, our first dance of the year. Um, I had two seniors, a boy and a girl, come in and and sit down in my office and first asked if we could have it and. And I said, well, yes, but you know, we have requirements that, that we have to, to follow. So I said, as long as you guys are willing to think outside the box, then 
um, you know, we can do it. And, and so it, how'd that, that look? I mean, this is, this is fascinating well, because well, I, I know I got the invitation, couldn't go. Yes. But I mean, so tell, so how to explain that to our viewers. I mean, how did, how did, a, how did a dance look in time of plague? Well, and, and it's actually quite, quite funny because at that time we were still under, um, if under 15 minutes, even with masks, students had been next to each other within six feet and one were to test positive, they would have to quarantine. Now it's a little bit different because um, the governors said if we're masked, both of us are masked, then, and one has COVID, that we're fine, that we don't, not that we're fine, but we don't have to, to quarantine based on it. Um, but as we're sitting there, we still had kind of our 15 minute rule. Right. And so I'm telling the kids, I said, well, you know, we can go to old fashioned dance cards where, you know, it. you spend I about love. five How do minutes. How you know with, about dance cards? I, I've never had one, but I was just trying to think outside the box and, and you could see their faces kind of just look at me and think, oh, well, um, and then finally the, the bell rang and we had gone through multiple things because they wanted to have food. And I said, oh, let's probably just not even, not even do that. We decided on water bottles and that was good. Um, and then finally one decided that um, the dance was only going to be 14 minutes long. So let's say it started at 8, it would end at 8.14, and then we didn't have to worry about contact tracing, and we didn't have to worry about any of that stuff. And um, after about three minutes, I, I let the student know that we could probably figure out a way that would make the dance longer than two or three songs. Um, and what we ended up doing is, is we spaced students out. Um, we grouped them by fall activities they were in. So if they were in um, volleyball, a lot of the volleyball players went together. Um, because chances are if one were to test positive, they would have been exposed in volleyball. Um, and so just different things like that. Now we, we have mostly a normal dance. Again, still water bottles, no food, um, but the kids are masked the entire time. And uh, we just have a large dance floor. And um, fortunately, our students like to dance wherever. And, and so it works out just fine. And um, yeah. we, we get some air going because when you have a mask on, you get really hot. Yeah, but, especially um, if you're dancing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so, but it's fun. I mean, we find ways to make it work, um, and we are small enough that we can do that. Yeah, and I mean, that is a blessing in, in our size as a school. Um, you know, but, uh, but I'm, I'm just, again, I, I love the fact that, you know, again, thinking outside the box, okay, how do we follow the rules? How do we take <laughs> care of each other? Mm -hmm. How can we mm -hmm. be a community, but at the same time, enjoy life, have fun, and have some of those activities that if we didn't have some of them, it would just feel a little bit less jubilant as the year goes on. Right, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so with, the, with the change in the rules, uh, mm -hmm. might they get one more dance in before the end that might even be a little bit more uh, typical dance? We, we've had three dances at the school this year. Um, our, the last dance we will have is prom, um, okay. and it is scheduled for May 1st. And our prom will be very similar to last year. Uh, they will promenade outside. Um, promenade with their masks on unless uh, I don't know whether all of you are familiar with that but I mean there's a big the parade is a big deal <laughs> yes, you know they are yes. dressed to the teeth you know um, you know I sometimes I just want to buy a vowel yes. um, but I mean they are dressed to the teeth they're doing their thing <laughs> yes and they are you know and they're making the most of it a p parents show up tons of pictures mm -hmm, I mm -hmm. mean you would think that they were paparazzi sometimes yes. uh, well flashed. and I never went through one in high school so it, my last year was my really first experience being a big part in running one, um, but they almost enjoy the promenade more than the actual dance. <laughs> I mean, it's, you get to show off your, your tux and your dress, and last year it was this big, they um, put, took parts of their dresses and made masks with them. And oh, now that so, was clever. Yes, yes. So, Matching masks, um, not bad. I'll, I'll be interested to see how the masks are this year, yeah. having a little bit more time to plan. and. Yeah. And, but yeah, they just, they promenade out there and um, then they take pictures and then they end up inside with dinner and some of them will dance if they dance and, and some of them just go to hang out and, and then they call it a night. Yeah. So. Uh, what was, we were doing something the other day and, oh, we were, they, the students were working, the seniors were working at the outreach mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and I started laughing because when I went in to visit with them and see what was going on and help, mm -hmm. um, I had to laugh because it was all the guys were around one table and all the girls were on the other yes. table. And I said, this looks like a high school dance. Yes. Yeah. And they were all laughing and they said, yeah, well, this is the way we're doing it. And yeah. so, and so mm -hmm. they were doing their thing. Yeah. Uh, but again, uh, you know, some of those moments uh, that, you know, they didn't have to lose 
They didn't have to lose all their moments when they can do service, all those moments when they can be together. And again, they mm -hmm. were all masked and having a good time. Uh, but it was it was just pretty fascinating, you know, watching them uh, interact. And, and interacting with the classroom mm -hmm. is always interesting too. Yes. Well, we got about a minute left. Mm -hmm. um, uh, you know, uh, what are your what are your dreams for the end of the semester? Just that we can finish out the year safely. Um, you know, all of our area schools, um, to our teachers, really the teachers more than anybody who've who've been on the front lines of adjusting for students. Um, as an administrator, you know, we ask our teachers to do a lot, and they really are the the heroes of this time in our schools. Um, but I just ask that all of our area schools, you know, end on a good note. We, we get to have graduation. We get to honor our class of 2021 and, and we start planning for next year and, and hopefully our guidelines free us up a little bit more to getting back to normal. Yeah. Yeah, that's a real blessing. My um, guest this morning, Dr. Emily Yoakum, who is the principal at Macaulay Catholic High School and uh, St. Peter's Middle School. Um, she's been here representing that, but she's also been kind of giving us an idea of how all the schools have done this. Uh, so thanks for being with us, yes. Emily. Thank you for having uh, me. Dr. Yoakum, I guess I should say. You are fine. Um, <laughs> we'll be right back after this Mercy Minute. Blessings and greetings of mercy to you. My name is Anna Nichols. I am a Sister of Mercy and currently the leader of Heritage and Spirituality at Mercy International Association. I love the fact that sisters throughout time have gone where they have been called to go and they have often picked up ministries that they never intended to pick up. 25 years ago there were 22,000 Sisters of Mercy globally. Today we're down to about 6,200 with Sister Rock and some of the others. But despite the fact there are six and a half thousand or six thousand two hundred sisters left, there is an amazing number of women and men of Mercy who are, are working alongside us and that continues to expand and expand and for me that is incredibly exciting. So as far as National Catholic Sisters Week, I really look at the legacy that they have passed on and the fact that so many women, men, young people are living Mercy today, that, that really is for me what's significant. Well, again, today we talked with one school administrator, uh, Dr. Emily Yoakum from our Catholic Joplin Area Catholic Schools, about how they cope during the time of COVID. I just hope that all of you who know people in school realize what a great job our educational community in Joplin and in the surrounding areas have done with our students during this time of COVID. Um, they deserve all of our admiration. They deserve all of our thanks for trying to make what could have been a much worse situation much better for our students. Our students have really not had to suffer quite as much as, as students in other areas of the country uh, because of the creativity and the dedication of so many uh, folks. I, of course, love my Joplin Area Catholic Schools teachers. Uh, kudos to them. Kudos to all of our educators in all of the area uh, for continuing to be phenomenal people for our kids. That's what we do here in our hometown. So join us next week for Faith in Our Hometown. God bless you. Have a great Sunday, and hopefully we'll see you then. Thanks for watching. Faith in Our Hometown can be seen Sunday mornings at 6.30 and 9 a.m. on KSN. Brought to you as a community service and sponsored by Mercy Hospital Joplin.